yes good morning and um, before we begin today's class uh, which would be on judges i very briefly wanted to uh, talk about the assessments uh, so for those of you who are online and for those of you who will be later watching the same video on the e platform um, probably on september 1st or 2nd or even 3rd uh, depending on you know when the technical team is um, available to help me with this uh, i will post your assessment one all right and like i had explained in the very beginning uh, for the online students and for the e platform people uh, it will be a multiple choice um, question paper of just 25 marks all right so uh, from the day that i post the uh, question paper you would have seven days to finish it so all that will be mentioned when, when i post the uh, assessment one i would give the instructions as well so you will also have the date of submission and um, one thing that you would need to note if you are an online student um, you know um, i have no control over the software so it closes it shuts down uh, you know the link which allows you to do your submissions closes on the date uh, which has been specified so and it cannot be changed uh, so especially for e-platform people if you are unable to finish your assessment one within the given time limit um, you are, you would not get a pass certificate at the end of the course uh, simply because the software will show that you have not completed it all right so for you especially for the e-platform students uh, this would be a very uh, serious thing you know having to redo an entire course just because you were a little late in your submission of your assessment one uh, so um, those who are on google classroom and who will be submitting their assessments online and also for the e-platform students uh, please uh, you would be given seven days exactly to finish the objective type questions and please do it within that time do not leave it for the last one hour or the last remaining two hours because who knows you know due to the time difference i mean uh, with um, with some confusion you know due to the time zones you may miss out so try and see to it uh, you know if you can just finish it off one day earlier that would be a big help okay so e platform students and google uh, classroom students try and finish it off maybe one day earlier so that there would be no confusion regarding time zones and time of submission and all of that um, but it's just an objective type uh, you would just have to tick the answers all right so these are the instructions for the online students all right we will begin with our um, book of judges so um, in the book of joshua we see that joshua gives his fable speech and he finally tells the people as for me and my house we will serve the lord now uh, you have to make your decision each of you, you each of your families has to decide will you follow the lord or uh, and enjoy the blessings you know which can result from that or do you uh, you know choose the side of evil so that's a choice which each person had to make and unfortunately we see the decision which was made by most of the people when we come here to the book of judges we see that the people um, fall away from god and they no longer stay faithful to him and we see the sad results of that here in the book of judges yes uh, there's a question here how would we be assessed and um, I was told for the Google Classroom students, uh, there would be a separate place where the question paper would be posted. So all of those details will be provided to you in the stream page. All right, you know, the stream page where I usually put the link for your class. Uh, I will put all of the instructions most clearly over there. So you will not have any hassles uh, because I'm also doing this for the first time and I'm not very clear with all the technicalities. So I will make sure that you have all the all of the details and only then, you know, will your seven day countdown begin. So you will not be affected in any way. I promise you that. All right. So um, uh, all the details would be put there in the stream page so that you will know how you are to access it and what you are to do. Uh, so those details will be provided all right okay um 
coming back to uh, judges and the fall into sin which we see over here in this chapter uh, in this book um, we see that uh, it was almost 450 years of a sinful rebellious lifestyle where do we get that figure from that's actually found in your acts chapter 13 verse 20 where you have uh, Stephen talking about you know he's is going over all the past of um, the Israelites uh, even as he's talking to these leaders who want to uh, kill him so even as he's talking to them going over all their past history he makes mention of even this dark period of the judges and he says for 450 years you know the, they chose to live in uh, sin and disobedience so that is how we kind of get an approximate figure that this time of the judges probably lasted for 450 years and uh, so as the judges were coming and serving one after the other they probably would have maintained written of whatever was you know of the events which took place during their time so um, over the over the uh, you know over the years all these records would have been carefully maintained in some uh, storage place so finally when samuel comes along when he becomes the prophet uh, at that time he probably would have you know edited and compiled all of these records and turned it into a book of judges so the most um, you know probable explanation is that Samuel would have been the writer of this book so he would have taken all those written records and then under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he would have put the whole thing together in in a particular order including only those portions which the Lord is directing him to include finally in the you know in the final uh, document or other we would say final scroll because he would have put the whole thing into into scrolls so um, we we say that Samuel is most probably the one who would have been the editor and compiler of the uh, book of Judges. And um, they say that this probably might have taken place uh, 1086 to 1064 BC. That would have been the time uh, when this particular book would have been compiled. Key personalities, of course, we have many of them. Um, the more familiar ones are, you know, Gideon. We also are familiar with Samson, Deborah. Many of the, many people probably would know. Uh, these are the, and of course we have many others, uh, Jephthah and Othniel and um, Ehud and all of those other people as well. Now coming to the genre that is used in this particular book, uh, of course we have narrative history because a lot of history is narrated. We also have some passages where you have. Uh, poetry being mentioned so there are poetic passages as well and we see another form of writing another form of ancient writing seen here and those are riddles where on earth do you think in this book of judges do we have these riddle passages mentioned any guesses exactly okay so um, so if you were to go to the ancient near eastern writings and look at those writings you would have certain writings devoted to riddles so that's the kind of writing format that they have used uh, over here in the book of judges wherever they were had to mention these uh, riddles so these are the kind of uh, uh, writing patterns that we see in the book of judges uh, why was this book written to make it very clear to future readers to make it very very clear to all future generations that if they choose not to obey the lord punishment will come judgment will happen there is no way of avoiding it so the author even as he would be writing you no know, uh, even as samuel would be editing and compiling this book he would have had one main purpose that all the future generations which are reading this scroll would remember that if they refuse to follow the Lord, there would be consequences. The protection of God would be removed from upon them, which will expose them to a lot of uh, harm and danger and warfare and, and a lot of struggle. So that, of course, would have been one of the main reasons why this particular book was written. And one thing that people would have understood if they are reflecting carefully on what has been recorded is that the real danger is not the wars which they had to you know um, 
face the invasions from the local people who came and invaded their uh, property and you know stole their crops and burnt their houses the actual danger was not that the greater danger was what they were storing inside their hearts because of what was inside their hearts all of these troubles came upon them in the first place there would have been no burning of houses there would have been no stealing of crops they would have lived in peace and enjoyed you know the protection of god if what they had stored inside their hearts was good and in line with god so they made a choice not to follow him they made a choice to start going after evil they chose to go into idolatry they decided what they're going to put inside their life it was a choice which they consciously made and that opened up their lives and their homes to all the misery that came in so one thing that we see about the book of judges the danger over here is not the external things the external things can come and become a serious factor which can destroy you utterly only if the inside is not kept in shape if the inside is in good shape difficulties will still come trials will still come but there is a god of gods who will keep an edge around you and will only allow a certain amount of strife to enter at a time and he will help you resolve it he will give you the strength to deal with it so how you are on the inside is vital that will determine what will happen uh, with the external things that come into our lives so that's a very important learning and sadly the people in the book of uh, judges the people of that time never seem to really understand this principle they continue to do whatever they wish to on the inside and they hope that things would become fine outside and it really doesn't work that way that's not how god has established his spiritual principles okay so that's a sad thing that we see um yeah in your textbook there was one comment that i saw and i kind of liked it uh, you know they were trying to make a comparison between joshua and judges and this is what was written in your textbook it said in joshua israel took the land from the canaanites but in judges the canaanites took the land from the israelites it is israelites and it's a very sad thing uh, god's plan for them was the first never the second you know the second thing uh, where the canaanites took the land from them and uh, that is what would happen if what you are putting on your inside if how you're maintaining your heart and your spirit and your uh, you know mind that is up to us we we get to decide we have free choice what we want to do with that um and there are three types of judges that we see being mentioned here in this uh, book uh, you have the most of them are warrior judges god basically appoints them as judge not so much to sit in a court and do judgment but rather judge in the sense they are the ones who will be go out and wage war and they will try to win back some of the land which the you know philistines or the other people have occupied so um, they are the warrior judges like gideon gideon would be a good example of a warrior judge a second type of judge that we see would be a priest judge which which is what we see in the last judge who comes along eli eli is a priest and he also serves as their judge so um, an example of a priest judge would be eli and of course you have a prophet judge because samuel is the one who is appointed as the first prophet and so from there the prophets begin so a prophet judge would be samuel and so we see all these three types of judges uh, kind of being mentioned in the uh in 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 this list of judges we have a question coming up yeah. she would be a prophetess yeah prophetess judge yes ah uh, okay you mean in that sense uh it's just that yes they were pro yes very true yeah, it's it's a good uh, point to bring up they were prophets who were hearing from god and conveying god's message to the people all along uh but samuel is considered the first prophet in the sense he was officially appointed in the way moses was appointed you know moses was considered their prophet you know their first prophet because moses says another prophet will be sent to you who is like me later on you know he says so in that sense uh samuel is, becomes the first prophet who's almost functioning like their main leader almost functioning like their main ruler so um Deborah uh, of course was a prophetess uh, but 
her um, influence would have been in wherever, whichever area she is living in. So the people who would be immediately staying in those places would come to her uh, to seek God's guidance and all of that. Okay, so um, yeah, and we see uh, Jesus later on assuming all of these roles. He will be a warrior one day in the book of Revelation. He uh, is a priest. He is a prophet. He is definitely a king. Uh, we see that as well. Uh, so all of these roles are actually completely, ultimately fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, the judges over here in this particular book are just kind of human representations of what Jesus will one day do more completely, what he will accomplish in a more perfect way uh, you know, in the future. So uh, yes, we have another question coming up. Uh, over here in the book of Judges, who is being called father? Uh, we'll kind of deal with that later because it's not part of the today's topic. But do remind me later because I tend to forget and I will uh, take it up with you. This is a question not related to our topic today. So we will, um, at the moment, we will not get into it. Let's get into the structure of this book of uh, Judges. Um, we could maybe say that um, chapters 1 to 3, or at least half of chapter 3. So chapter 1 to maybe halfway through chapter 3 can be section 1. Uh, where uh, we are kind of given an introduction to the condition that the people are in right now. We discover that they have not completely conquered the whole land the way they were ordered to. They were ordered to uh, kill all these seven people groups that God has you know, declared judgment upon. They were supposed to wipe them out of the land, take over the land, establish themselves over there and start living for God in those, in those areas. But the people did not do that. They lacked the faith. They lacked the spiritual maturity. And so they were scared to fight. They were scared to conquer. Uh, they didn't have the strength to conquer because they didn't have the spiritual backing. You know, they lacked in spiritual maturity. And as a result of that, we see that um, the um, large portions of the land were still left unconquered. As a result of that, the locals gradually began to get more powerful. And they were able to take back those territories. So there was a lot of confusion caused simply because the people had not done what they had been asked to do in the first place. If they had finished conquering and wiped out those seven people groups, those seven nations, things would have been very different for them. Okay, so um, we in the in these first three chapters, we are given an introduction to what condition the people are in right now, and then uh, from the latter part of your chapter 3, we see this whole cycle beginning where they rebel against God and or because they have rebelled against God, God removes his protection from them. They are exposed to the uh, you know uh, evil one and all the problems that he brings in. So they get conquered by people, they get subjected by people, their crops are all destroyed by fire. All of that happens. Then the people remember God and they say, Lord, please help us, please deliver us. And God sends along a judge. And so they're happy during the lifetime of the judge because the judge is a godly man and he wants them to follow in God's footsteps. They kind of listen for a little while. Once the judge dies, they again forget the Lord and they go back into their sin. And the whole cycle repeats once again. So uh, we see this happening again and again uh, in the book of Judges. A total number of 14 judges are mentioned here in our uh, book of Judges. We don't know whether the entire uh, you know, lot are mentioned. Maybe there are a few judges who are not mentioned. We do not know. But anyway, these are the 14 judges uh, that God wanted included over here in this particular record. Okay, so 14 judges are mentioned here in the book of, uh, in this particular book. Then uh, chapter 17 to 31 uh, can be the, you know, uh, the next section maybe. Uh, in chapter 17 to 31, we are given some specific examples of how the people had fallen, how far they had fallen, how terrible their condition had become. So we see some examples of that in these in, in this last section. Um, 
we see the tribe of dan which almost completely goes into idol worship um we see uh, one tribe being almost killed by all the other tribes that is the tribe of benjamin which is almost wiped out and just 600 men are left in that tribe uh, we see all of these things happening in this last section um so one main thing that comes to our minds even as we look at this book of judges um is that the people did not follow the spiritual um instructions which were given to them what was told to them in the book of you know uh, deuteronomy uh, if you remember when we were covering the book of deuteronomy i actually read out a list of verses where it talks about how important it is for parents to bring up their children uh in the ways of god and tell them all that yahweh has done for them so far and what did these parents do they have not bothered teaching those things to their children there were so many verses in deuteronomy again and again reminding this generation which is going to step into the promised land what does moses say to them your fathers could not make it they sinned and they were punished but you have a new fresh chance you are going to be stepping into the land you are going to be conquering it so teach all these things to your children but then they did not do that and because they did not do that we see this um, you know present condition uh, you know which we see over here so uh, this there are some important verses which actually reflect on that uh, so maybe we could just uh, we could have one student over here read out judges chapter 2 verses 7 to 11 and if you could please follow in your bibles you know uh, those of us who are here while when someone is reading please you know focus on what is being read so that you will absorb what is being said judges chapter 2 verses 7 to Okay, so here it says that during the lifetime of Joshua and of the elders who outlived him, who had seen all the great things the Lord had done with their own eyes, they saw the great miracles that God did, and these people were supposed to convey to the future generations what they have seen with their eyes or the things which they have experienced, but. they failed to do that because they failed to do that it says in verse 10 another generation grew up who knew neither the lord nor what he had done what was wrong with these parents why on earth did they not talk about these things with their children and why did those children not convey it to their next generation and that is the same problem that we are seeing even today i really see that in in so many homes and it troubles me a lot a lot of uh, parents are under the impression that if they sent their children to the sunday school for half an hour that is somehow supposed to build them up and turn them into spiritual giants half an hour sitting over there in sunday school is not going to make much of a difference they may learn some new things which they had not known before but the training would have to be done by the father and the mother and especially the attitude of fathers nowadays distresses me they really think that their uh, you know main goal in life which god has put them on this earth for is to go and earn as much as possible and the mother somehow in in her busy schedule she needs to tuck in this extra little bit of you know spiritual mentoring of the children no it is a serious responsibility of both the parents there's a generation going today growing up today who no neither know the lord nor what he has done and it, that is a very very sad state of affairs so i'm only you know stressing on that because all of you sitting over here are young people and uh, please when you build your marriages remember uh, just sending your kids to school is not enough 
they need to be trained they need to know who the lord is what the lord can be for them in their personal lives then they will stand for him then their eyes will stay on him and then they can grow up into something strong and so people who can serve a purpose who can accomplish something and fathers should take it as seriously as mothers okay yeah that's just something that i wanted to get off my chest um so uh, here in judges we see uh, the very sad consequences of of this poor parenting which was done by the previous generations uh yeah this is a question which has come up here and let me just take a look at that uh, why did the people keep going back to the bals and the ashers in uh, the ot um because it's so much easier to worship the bals and the ashers uh you know you're supposed to perform certain rituals and certain sacrifices and shell out a whole bunch of money and if you do that you're told that your crops will grow better you are told that your cattle will not become sick and uh, that is so much easier even if it means having to shell out hard earned money on those you know priests who are going to be doing those uh, bal rituals and all of that and uh, the ushers the added advantage with uh, worshiping the asher ashera pole and the whole uh, that whole uh, asherim setup is that you can also indulge in uh, immoral behavior you know uh, so so the bals and the ashers were catering to the flesh catering to the sinful nature which is there inside each one of us on the other hand yahweh is saying no kill the flesh listen to me focus on me keep my ways so that my blessings can be released upon you and that takes it much more um, you know commitment and uh, so that is the main reason why they were going back because uh, they looked at the other nations worshiping the bals and getting stinking rich so their idea was that if they are getting rich by worshiping the bals even even we our crops can be taking we don't need yahweh to protect our crops the bals can take care of our crops as for the uh, asherim and all of that uh, you know that encourages immorality it supports what we are doing so all of these things the flesh nature enjoyed these uh, religions and which is why they kept going back because the following the lord is always tougher but following the lord leads not just to some blessings here on earth but eternal blessings down the line uh, because you and i are going to be uh, alive over here for maybe uh, 98 years or 100 years after that i doubt maybe some of us will even make it up to 110 years but after that we have thousands and thousands of years you know in the next life i mean this is just a small portion and are we preparing for that you know this we are we're not uh, meant for 110 years of life we are meant for billions of years for infinity we'll be alive forever so we need to plan for that future because it's going to be grand and uh, so uh, that should be our eye should be on that the people of israel of course were focused on the few uh, 100 years which they would be alive on this earth um yeah this is question about human uh, child offerings um i'm not sure whether that had already come in during the time of the judges probably had uh, you know given human nature uh, but uh, it gained greater prominence later on in the future ages um at this point of time i am not very sure i would probably have to do a reading of the cultural background during this particular period of time but um, it was not that prominent yet um so yes human sacrifices were done later on and uh, probably to the bals i'm not sure to which gods uh, but uh, it came later it gained prominence later okay so not at this particular point of time uh yes now coming to the story of dan and what the tribe of dan did in the book of judges um maybe we can have one person read out da um, deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 and 2 where you kind of get an idea of what god had originally wanted from the his instructions to the israelites
okay um over here it's given uh, it's very clearly told that god's judgment is going to be coming down upon these seven people groups which are mentioned over here so when they go into the promised land these are the people whom they would be attacking these are the people whom they are supposed to wipe out not the other people groups there's no mention made about the other people groups dan on the other hand goes and occupies the territory of a um, bunch of people who are living in a peaceful state they they had no right to do that okay so uh, they occupy territory which is not been given to them by the lord so which is uh, why god is very angry with them uh, if we can look at judges chapter 13 verse 1 um yeah if someone could read out judges chapter 13 verse 1 okay so uh, the people of um, this tribe they were the land which was given to them on one side you would have the tribe of juda living and on the other side you would have the philistines living and uh, they were spiritually in such a bad condition that they did not have the strength to fight the philistines so they thought we are stuck in the small uh, you know um, a narrow region and we are unable to conquer most of it because we are spiritually too weak to conquer the giants i mean they were not giants of course the amorites were not giant i mean the philistines were not giants but uh, uh, i mean the giants the people over here were not giants uh, okay let me do it correctly yeah the people living in this particular territory of dan were not giants in size but they were philistines who were powerful in warfare and these people did not have the spiritual strength to be able to go and conquer those territories which belongs to them and so they thought why don't we go to another place which is peaceful and you know attack the people over there and take over that particular portion of the territory so therefore they go against god's will and they settle in a place which is not allotted to them and um, i have not written down the scripture reference for it for this passage my goodness that's really bad so sorry uh I'm so sorry. Maybe I'll put it in the stream page for those of you who are online, and then uh, for the others, I can look it up, you know, in my Bible and tell the others. So they, so the tribe tribe of Dan chooses to go and attack a people group whom God has not told them, uh, given them any instructions about, and they take over their land, even though they have not been authorized by God to do that. All right. So, um, um, so that is something that they were not supposed to do. coming to chapter 4 uh and we can maybe briefly talk about deborah and barak um in the notes this is what i have it says here that deborah was probably the only judge um in the book of judges who ruled over all of israel in the sense her influence was over all parts of israel okay that's not something that i had really uh, registered in my mind earlier uh, so she so it looks like people came to her from all of the tribes for consultation and uh, so she had a large amount of influence and over here in chapter 4 we see that uh, it is uh, they are having a lot of trouble from the king of canaan and his commander in chief the commander in chief of the Can canaanite army in that area was sisera and sisera had an army of um, 900 chariots which were fitted with iron we see that in chapter 4 verse 3 where it talks about how the this particular army was very powerful because they had chariots which were fitted with iron which means they can uh, go faster uh they can last longer and uh, so it would be more difficult to to kill someone who is sitting inside such a chariot and moving at a greater speed 
they would be able to throw arrows at the people who are you know on foot uh, the soldiers who are, who are just on foot so therefore the israelites found them very difficult to attack and uh, so at that time um deborah is instructed by god to ask barak the son of ahinoam that would be in your verses 6 to 7 so she tells him that god wants you to take 10000 men and go and fight against sisera so barak is very afraid to do that he does not want to face those iron chariots okay wooden chariots using iron fittings okay so he's not he's scared to uh, deal with that and so he says uh, if you go with us then we will go otherwise we will not and Deborah says, because you are not willing to listen to what God has said, and you're asking for human support and help, uh, you will not receive much honor out of this undertaking. Instead, the praise will go to someone else. So we see all of that happening in verses 1 to 7. And then in verse 15, it talks about how finally Barak, you know, he works up the guts to go. And it says that the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword. Okay, the, there are no details given about how Barak and his people, um, you know, win that battle. It just says over there that they were able to completely uh, kill all of those soldiers. And Sisera gets down from his chariot and he runs from there. Okay, those are the details which are given. But then in the, in the next chapter, chapter 5, there is a song which Deborah and Barak sing. And in that song, you have some more details about exactly how the battle took place, what exactly happened during the battle. So if you were to go to the next chapter, chapter 5, and if you were to look at verses 19 to 21, there you have some additional details. Maybe we could have one person here read out Judges chapter 5, verses 19 to 21. Okay, so here we have these 10,000 people whom God wants to go and fight. And on the other side, you have uh, how many chariots were there? 900 and some. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 900 uh, chariots fitted with iron. And uh, so God made arrangements on how he's going to defeat these people. And so we see a some very similar incident to the Red Sea happening over here. Okay. So what happens is all these people, they come over here to the, you know, um, near the Kishon River. Uh, they're somewhere on the banks of the Kishon River. All of these, uh, uh, yeah, I have to finish this I'm in the middle of something. So, yeah. So uh, they come to the banks of the Kishon River uh, and uh, they're waiting for, you know, they're making plans to attack the Israelites. So what God does is he causes a flooding of the river. So somewhere like we were talking about yesterday, all this, you know, um, about the rivers coming up from the mountain areas, and then you have mudslides which can block the water. On the other hand, if there's a mudslide which has been there and which has kept the waters blocked for a long time, and then suddenly if the blockage is removed, you can imagine how much water would rush down into the valley. So that is what happens over here in this particular case. The Kishon River was flowing along nicely, calmly, peacefully, and suddenly somewhere up in the mountain, uh, mountain regions, some particular blockage was opened up. And so the waters come rushing down and the river floods and that entire bank is flooded. And here you have these heavy wooden chariots with iron fittings. So which means they're now extra heavy because of the iron fittings. And they all begin to sink into that slush and they can no longer move about very easily. So there they all are wondering, my goodness, you know, all this slush and all this flooding, where on earth did it come from? And even as they're kind of wondering what to do, you have the nine... Uh, the the 10,000 Israelites coming over there with their swords and they are able to just literally kill these people because they're sitting over there like sitting ducks, nowhere to go. I know they're stuck in that position, not anticipating what would happen. And so without much difficulty, these people who are just foot soldiers who have no chariots are able to defeat 
powerful people who actually had chariots so they couldn't just you know uh, know uh, take their chariots and go racing off they could not because they were like stuck in the uh, mud because of the and that is why they sing in the next chapter they're so amazed by what god has done and they say from the heavens the stars fought from their courses they fought against cesera they just basically talking about how uh, you know heavenly forces has, have opened up the rains and because the rains came down um, uh, you know uh, so maybe up there in the mountainous areas maybe there was a serious flooding because there were heavy rains or something we do not know the actual you know uh, geographical details but god causes a flooding of the river and the river is able to um, you know make the army helpless the philistine army helpless and so they are able to get their uh, victory and just like um, um you know uh, debora had told uh, we see that barak does not get the full glory for the you know for the victory because cesera is not killed by barak but rather by a lady who uses trickery to uh, defeat him so we see that uh, later detail um i did not touch upon the gideon story because that's something that most of us are familiar with um another two interesting ones would be jephtha story that also is rather significant the samson story of course is also very familiar um so those are some of the main things that we see in the book of judges um so any questions that anyone would like to pose at this time we have about 5 minutes if you have any questions yes yeah they what do they do in the in the next chapter they grieve ha huh. so um the people um, i mean you know in, in there are i think in three or four places in the book of judges where you have the wording which says there was no king in those days and everyone did uh, what what they felt was right in their eyes um so they would just follow their emotions so when uh, they decided to you know massacre the benjamites they were just following their anger the anger the rage that they are feeling in their hearts so they go out uh, and they you know uh, attack them and then after killing most of them now they are regretting what they have done so yes there is a grief which comes because you have done something very stupid without uh, you know following god's guidance so they grieved because of their own mistake uh, and um, they were proud to be israelites they were proud to have 12 tribes and now they were little worried that one of the tribes is going to become extinct very soon and then um, yeah they resort to other terrible foolish methods to try and recover from that situation so there's a lot of foolishness that we see over here in the book of judges and um, it says that everyone did whatever they felt was right in the in, in his own eyes uh, judges 176 181 um, 191a the first part of 191 and 2125 in these four places it mentions this wording everyone did as he saw fit whatever he thought was right in his eyes he just did without any guidance from the lord and which is why the book of judges tends ten i mean turns out so bad because there is no guidance no turning to the lord for his counsel all right um which was uh, killed you mean ah they were not one of the 12 tribes um but they were big enough to call themselves a tribe uh, but they um are not one of the tribes created by god and you know made god made future promises covenant promises so the covenant promises were for these 12 tribes uh, but then there are other um groups and clans which could have used the word tribe for themselves uh, but the official ones were these 12 tribes right.
I, they uh, were um, they were uh, not following the Lord's instructions clearly at that time. So they did whatever they felt was all right. Uh, but we would have to really look into that context of that whole passage to really decide whether what was being done was godly or not. Uh, yeah. So I, yeah, you wanted to say, ask something? So how much of it was approved by God? Uh, so that, you know, so uh, yeah. Uh, OK, um, for those of you who are like uh, watching online, um, the I mean, the, they're asking about, you know, um, the massacre of the Benjamites, which took place, and what they tried to do after that to, um, to again, increase the population. And they resorted to kidnapping and all of that. Uh, so um, all of that was not directed by God, and so some students were just expressing their thoughts on that. Um, okay, uh, the question over here is, uh, why were the Benjamites excluded from the Israelite tribes later? Were they excluded because Benjamin and Judah were considered as one unit? So they continued to be part of the 12 tribes. Um, so the northern Israel was the, uh, you know, the other, uh, the other 10 tribes. And then these two, Judah and Benjamin, together formed the land of Judah. And because the Judahite population was larger in number, their entire uh, southern Israel was called Judah, but it doesn't mean that there, there were no Benjamites living among them. Benjamites continued to have their um, hold on to their identity. Yeah, so they were not made extinct or anything. Yeah. Uh, we'll, um, we'll close you know, at this point, but um, further questions, uh, you know, we, if, I mean, if there's anything important we can you know, deal with it even in the next class. So those of you who are online, you can post your questions in the stream page. And those of you who are here, um, we'll see. Right. Yeah, let's just uh, close with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you so much for the uh, short few lessons that we could learn from this book of Judges. Um, thank you, O Lord, that you are a God who gives us second chances again and again. And uh, we pray, Lord, that you would help us not to be like the uh, people who are living in the time of the judges, but rather we would um, make use of the second chance that you give us and not go back into sin, that we would be grateful for the deliverance that you have shown, for the mercy that you have shown, and uh, we would be willing to stay faithful to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, thank you so much for actively participating in the class, you know, in the chat, uh, and uh, we'll meet again next class.